Hi, I'm Jim Cates. I'm a psychologist in Northeast Indiana. I'm also the author of Serpent in the Garden, Amish Sexuality in a Changing World. I had previously written Serving the Amish, a Cultural Guide for Professionals, and both books are published through Johns Hopkins University Press and available through their catalog and also available through major booksellers. In writing Serpent in the Garden, it felt as though I was walking a tightrope. Uh, many among the Amish would and do feel that the book is unnecessary. It calls attention to an area of their lives that they feel is better not called out in print. It's simply too personal. It should be shrouded in mystery. Part of the reason for going ahead and writing it is the fact that the glare of the spotlight shines on sexuality in Amish communities all too often these days and it highlights harsh truths. Um, there are newspaper articles, magazine articles, there are books written about the experience of sexual abuse in plain people communities including the Amish. There are articles and, and books about domestic violence uh, tragic situations that are very real among the Amish. Uh, persons who feel trapped in a patriarchal system. And I think anyone who, who deals with the Amish or any plain people on a regular basis would be hard pressed to deny that these horror stories exist. The problem is that anyone who deals with any culture in any depth is hard pressed to deny that these horror stories exist everywhere. So where there are people, there are going to be terrible acts. There are going to be people who are selfish, vindictive, and have no thought for someone else that are willing to use them for their own purpose of personal gain. The problem is there are also people who are selfless and idealistic and willing to rise above their humanity in every culture as well. So if we focus on the horror and we ignore everything else, we create a distorted scene that plays equally as loosely with the facts as the stories that attempt to idealize Amish life. And that becomes my concern in accepting the idea of the Amish that sexuality should not be discussed uh, because then the only people discussing it are presenting one side of the story. Still, no investigator, no author can state, I have provided an unbiased account. Each of us is biased in our perceptions, in whatever we share. In the preface to Serpent in the Garden, I offer the lenses through which I view not only the Amish, but the world. And in doing so, hopefully, I give the reader the background of my assertions and allow them to then consider whether I've allowed my biases to interfere with my perceptions. Um, Serpent in the Garden tackles Amish sex, sexuality, and gender roles as essential parts of their lives. And their expression of each of these areas is mediated by the culture in which they live. As with any culture, there's good, there's bad, and there's so much in between. This book takes an unflinching look across the panorama of sexual expression. And it does so using a model known as queer theory. And queer theory may sound out of place for some or daunting to others, but it's really not. Uh, queer theory is beautifully crafted in that it can be used as a straightforward explanation of behavior, or it can be developed to become dynamic and intertwining and fuse itself with other theories in the process. Here it's used as a framework and a framework only. And at its most basic, 
Queer theory assumes that a predominant culture will impose its beliefs about what is acceptable in the area of sexuality. And because most persons are heterosexual, it's considered that the predominant culture will be heteronormative. And that's the term that's used. So the farther from the heteronormative a subculture finds itself, the more it has to struggle to hold on to its beliefs. Now in the late 19th, early 20th centuries, Amish beliefs about sexuality were much closer to the predominant culture in America. For example, Amish still believe very much in a patriarchal society. They believe in submission of women to men. Late eight, or late 19th, rather, early 20th century America, that was very much in step with the heteronormative, with the, the mainstream culture. More and more now, the emphasis is on equality of men and women. And so the Amish are a subculture whose views are at odds with the heteronormative because they have not kept pace with the changes in the heteronormative culture. Even for fundamental Christians, there's a more relaxed attitude about divorce, premarital sex, cohabitation. Uh, and again, the Amish hold a much more rigid view about these things. So they are different than the mainstream heteronormative in the way they see sex and sexuality. They have become a subculture holding on to something very different. So add the emphasis on strong family ties, cohesion to the community, rather than small groups of friends, and their emphasis is very different indeed from what we experience in the mainstream heteronormative. And these are the beliefs that Serpent in the Garden explores using queer theory as a foundation. Chapters explore sex, gender roles, they explore how intimacy differs within Amish culture. Again, because they are a collective culture, their experience of intimacy is so different from ours, and that's striking as well. There's a chapter that takes an unflinching look at the tragedy of child sexual abuse. Lots and lots of articles and books written about the experience of child sexual abuse and the tragedy it creates. No question about that. Less written about the way the culture addresses child sexual abuse and the difficulties within Amish culture about child sexual abuse. And because of the different approach to sex and sexuality, it is a different issue amongst the Amish than it is in mainstream America to tackle the problems of child sexual abuse. There's a chapter on the response to paraphilias or fetishes in a tightly structured culture in which the purpose of sex is to glorify God. How did those problems get addressed? Again, I talk about that. There's a chapter on the struggle that concerns the Amish more than any other at this point, sexual minorities. The Amish feel deeply threatened by uh, the legitimacy of same-sex marriage. They feel deeply threatened by the increasing acceptance of sexual minorities in the queer community. Uh, a chapter addresses that. Serpent in the Garden draws from my years of work with the Amish as a psychologist doing counseling, testing, consulting, and of course, years of friendships with numerous individuals and families. And I am indebted to the kindness of so many plain people who have shared with me and in turn allow me to share with you. I'm also indebted to the support of so many experts in the field of Amish studies and also Johns Hopkins University Press who published both Serpent in the Garden and Serving the Amish. So whether you choose to read this book or another book from the Young series, 
which is an excellent resource on the Amish published through Johns Hopkins Press. I wish you well.